What Off the Grid means and what it meant whenever we started this place, which is 1979, was that you have no utilities. We said off grid means solar panels, our own well, our own water, our own electricity, and of course, our own road. It's made us very, very careful. It hasn't made us brilliant, but we try to do what we consider like conscionable living. We get our water from this well. Uh, it's 200 feet deep and then we have the well pump set at 180 feet. We power it from the generator over in that shed there, and then it's piped up to a water tank that's 70 feet up there, a 5,000 gallon holding tank that we then use for the rest of our water in here. The well was probably my chief reality alert when we moved here. I learned that the well is not like leaving the water running in a regular house. You never know if you've left the water running or left a hose on or something. If we've left something on, we know. <laughs> we run out of water. We put in the solar panels. This is third generation that's in there now. Batteries, voltage regulators, inverters, and um, just treat it like a normal house, but you can only do your main functions during the day. I still ask him, are the batteries charged that I can do this, this, and this? And he'll say, yes, but one at a time. First thing in the morning's better. Yeah. <laughs> a guild is really a grouping of plants that are anchored generally by a large tree like this screw bean mesquite. And then in the understory, a combination of other plants. The tree provides shade and protection and also attraction. We love flowers. So this is a native golden eye, I believe, and then we have a buckwheat. These are volunteers. All day long it's pulsing with life. It's also far enough from the house that our activity has less impact on it than those, those areas that are, are closer to our doors and our patios and stuff. So we have a lot of fun up here. This is a common name, desert apricot. They are very interesting plants because they're, they're an indicator species of how much water we got in the winter. If they come out with a dark green, that means we didn't get enough water for them to produce seeds. If they come out a luminous green with their leaves, then that means we got enough water. There's always an alpha hummingbird, and they will seemingly die before they will let something drink from the feeder that they've claimed. So we thought, we can't just have them here, and so we have singletons, and those get owned. This is sort of the, this is like the dining hall, <laughs> and those are, you know, your, your breakfast in bed or whatever kind of thing. We've loved them. We have them in the winter, we have them in the summer. They're kind of the, the river that runs through our, our wildlife up here. We put out watering stations because they're sort of the key factor in survival of wildlife. The different water features attract different animals. The birds love this bird bath down here because it's close to their feeding hole. The deers at night, the bucks, use the well bird bath. The does will use the guild in this one. Our water feeders in all of our bird baths are less than two inches deep. If it's deeper than that, the baby quail drowned in the spring. Uh, baby quail are very foolish, they just jump into the water and they drown. One animal that we've seen that's not often seen in the Morongo Basin is a bear. We call it our bear because for the last three years we've been taking pictures of him and he's blind in one eye so we know it's our bear. I think stewardship is different from actual ownership because it recognizes that we're temporary and the land has been here before us and the land will be here after us. But leaving it in a space where the wildlife that it is home to and has been home to before us, that it will also be home to them after we leave. 